Previously on Ace Attorney Investigations, Edgeworth here. Let's take a look at what happened in this sky-high murder. After regaining consciousness on my flight back home, I discovered a body in the lounge. Flight attendant Rhoda Tenero tied me up after she came across the horrible sight. I am sure that you are the perpetrator of this crime. One argument later, I managed to prove otherwise. Miss Tenero and I investigated the scene of the crime and discovered footprints in the grape juice. What does this mean? I have no idea. Let's find out on Ace Attorney Investigations, next! What is this sinister looking figure on the floor here? Oh, that's a piggy bank of our company mascot, Mr. Ifly. It's just one of the many pieces of merchandise we sell in our in-flight shop. This bank is a limited edition, and is so popular that we're down to our last one. You have an in-flight shop? Yes, it's just beyond the lounge to the right. The shutter to the store is closed at the moment. But it was open the whole flight up until Mr. Hicks's body was discovered. There's blood on here. Could this have been the murder weapon? Let's keep that in mind. The money was useful earlier. Money is strewn all over the floor of the elevator. I would guess it was all in Mr. Hicks's wallet at some point. Is there anything else interesting around here? I doubt anyone was expecting to find a dead body in an elevator on this flight. So Mr. Hicks... He's really... dead? Yes. She's trembling. Although I can't fault her for that when there's a corpse right there. Mr. Hicks... If you're really dead, then please answer yes. I see she's over the trembling now, although a new symptom seems to have appeared. Anyway, I should focus on the victim's body. Let's see. There's blood on the back of Mr. Hicks's head. Could this be the cause of death? He appears to have been struck very hard. Even his glasses are broken. I believe that might be all I can see right now. I wonder what was hanging off of this lanyard. Something's missing from this picture. Now if I could just put my finger on it. Now, let's see if I can connect any dots here. No, I really don't think I can. And I appear to have blacked out. Mr. Edgeworth, you... You look like you're talking to the clouds. Uh, is that so? Then tell me, how did I get here, and what do you suppose I said to them? I don't know, but it looked like a rather one-sided conversation. The clouds, they tell me nothing. And after that mysterious blackout, I imagine a glass of, uh, grape juice will steady my nerves. These bottles and glasses must have been broken by the turbulence. There is quite a bit of broken glass here. Please be careful when passing through the area. Thank you very much for the warning, Mr. Edgeworth. However, no matter how kind you are towards me, know that it does not clear up any suspicions I have about you. Uh, I wasn't warning you for the sake of clearing my name. And I appear to have blacked out again. But come to in the middle of a brilliant piece of deduction. Aha! True. There wasn't anyone else in the lounge other than myself right before the turbulence. But if the killer was in the elevator along with the victim, then that's a different story. Hmm. Now, what can I put together with this new piece of information? While these certainly non-alcoholic footprints would be the best choice to prove that someone was in there, these broken glasses are very suspicious. Could it mean? Absolutely nothing. I was right with my first instinct with those footprints. I have it! I'm sorry, but I don't understand, Mr. Edgeworth. I can prove that someone other than myself was here around the time of the murder. What? Really? Yes. It's rather simple, actually. The proof is in the pudding. Or rather, the grape juice in this case. These footsteps here confess to me this very fact. That someone exited the elevator alive. Seeing as how the victim is dead, that would mean a second person. But, 
Couldn't the footprints be from Mr. Hicks himself? Ah, but if you take a look at our victim's shoes, you can see the soles are spotless. Which means... Mr. Hicks wasn't alone in the elevator. In fact, it's quite the opposite. There was actually one other person inside the elevator. Time to look for more clues, I guess. I could have sworn that was the end. But I do have this one dangling thread of logic I need to connect. Spilled grape juice in a pool at my feet. Unfortunately, the delightful scent of grapes is obscured by the unpleasant smell of the crime scene. This scent in the air... It's the same smell as the smell of my towels after they come out of my home dryer. Uh, I would have never expected something like that by looking at you. I suppose everyone has something unpleasant about them. Reminder to self, never get trapped in an elevator with Mr. Nero. Hmm? There's something sticking out of his pocket. Hope you won't mind if I take a look at what's inside. Hmm? It's a picture. It looks like it was taken inside a building somewhere. There's something odd about this picture when you compare it to Mr. Hicks as he is now. Hmm. <laughs> I see. So that's it then. Well, if it were a snake, it would have bitten me by now. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Well... Eureka! Mr. Hicks's machine is nowhere to be found. His machine? Ahem. <clears throat> His cell phone, Miss Nero. Ah, so I guess because it's not here... Yes, I think we can safely deduce that the killer took it. Yet another sterling investigation by Miles Edgeworth. Hmm? What's going on over there? Oh, hell. Unforgivable! This is unforgivable! Do you understand what I am saying? The movie is late! It is the same level of bad as if the plane arrived late! Uh, but the movie... What?! I will not talk to you anymore! You are just wasting my time! What is the matter, Mr. LeBlanc? If there is no emergency, please return to your seat, sir. Do not tell me what to do! I need not to sit down! Well, Mr. Prosecutor, did you prove you are innocent yet? If you would like, I will prove my innocence to you right now. What?! Nonsense! Are you saying my eyewitness testimony is mistaken? Not mistaken, merely that there is room for doubt. I'd be most honored if you could please tell me what you saw in detail once more. Fine! Suit yourself! I am certain I saw Mr. Hicks enter that elevator! It was when the needles on my pocket watch pointed to the 6 and the 12. The body was discovered 15 minutes after that in the lounge. Yes. Then you, the only person in the lounge at that time, must be the criminal. Mr. LeBlanc's conclusions seem to make logical sense. After all, the only person in the lounge at the supposed time of the murder was me. So, my eyewitness testimony. If you think you can destroy it, then come. Let me see. Hurley, do I look like a man who is having the time to wait for you? Why is he so irritated? I'm the one accused of murder here. Anyway, I must find a way to discredit Mr. LeBlanc's account somehow and fast. Time to take your testimony apart, you Burginian buffoon. Hold it! It's true that I found the victim's body at 6.15. And that's when I found the two of them as well. 
You see, it all matches my testimony. Hmm, not exactly my best moment. Hold it! Mr. LeBlanc, were you able to get a good look at the inside of the elevator at that time? Of course I saw what was inside! And you are sure that the victim was in the elevator alone? Yes! The only person inside was that Mr. Hicks man! Hmm. This last outburst is a bit too important to let go. No one else was in the elevator, you say? Well, I believe I have just the piece of evidence to disprove that. OBJECTION! <laughs> Mr. LeBlanc. What is it? There is a very glaring contradiction in your testimony. What do you mean? Please take a look at the area in front of the elevator. There, at the spilled grape juice. Yes, and? Will you admit you also spilled it with the blood? No, it spilled itself during the turbulence. But, the interesting thing here is the set of grape juice footprints. Footprints? Yes, the ones that lead from within the elevator out into the lounge itself. It's evidence that proves that someone other than Mr. Hicks exited the elevator alive. Ugh. There must have been another person in the elevator with Mr. Hicks. Now then, I'm done playing games. Why don't you tell us the truth? Can you please translate for us? Um... No way! That's totally impossible! I guess is what he said. No way! That is totally impossible! I know there was no other person in there! I saw with my own eyes! Hmm. If you want to know what I think, Mr. Edgeworth, I don't think Mr. LeBlanc is lying to us. I suppose she's right. He doesn't seem to be lying. But then what does it mean? What about this contradiction? Mr. LeBlanc, please, just once more, will you recall the details of what you witnessed for me? I was very upset when Mr. Hicks passed by my seat. I was always checking the time, over and over again. I happened to follow that man with my eyes when he passed me. And I saw clearly into the elevator he was entering. But I swear, there was no one else inside. No one. Mr. LeBlanc, if you would please calm down. What? Dare you two have an issue with my eyewitness testimony? Ah! No, not at all. Please forget I said anything. Yet again, he doesn't appear to be lying. But I can't let this testimony stand as the truth. And quite aside from that, I cannot abide rudeness towards dear Mr. Nero. So, are you still upset now? I am always upset! The only time I am not is when I have a piece of art in my hand. It's surprisingly easy to believe that about him. But I was even more upset when Mr. Hicks walked by me. Hold it! Why were you so attentive to the time? Because! Because something unforgivable was happening! Hmm. Come to think of it, you were yelling about something unforgivable earlier. I was giving a complaint to the attendant about the movie starting time. Return back to me my time. In money! You understand the point. Movie? Is he talking about the in-flight one that's mentioned in the magazine? Hmm. A summary of the plot and the start time. Interesting. They were supposed to show license to love, laugh, Maim and murder. I cannot see that movie in my country. You can only see it on international flights. I looked forward greatly to that movie. I checked my pocket watch whenever possible, so I would not miss it. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I came on board. So my watch is not long. It matched the schedule. But the movie was still late. Very, very late. 
your pocket watch. I'd like to ask you a little more about it, if that's all right. The movie I wanted to see would not stop. I think I'm beginning so to see exactly what happened here. Many times. But can I prove it with this evidence yet? Hmm. Might as well try. Objection! Well, that certainly didn't work. Hold it! So, this movie you mentioned is the one listed in the Sky Magazine. Yes! I was so looking forward to watching License to Love, Laugh, Maim, and Murder. Miss Nero, was this movie shown on this flight? Yes, it was shown at the scheduled time. Isn't it possible you simply slipped through it by accident? Nonsense! You doubt me? No! no. Now stop pointing at me like that! Odd. How did he miss a movie that he was clearly hoping to see? I checked my pocket watch a great number of times! That much I know for sure! Well, obviously the pocket watch was set wrong. And I think I know exactly why. Hold it! You're sure about what you just testified, Mr. LeBlanc? Yes, of course! I am a very busy man! I am immediately busy when I land! I have many places to go, and no time to waste adjusting my pocket I watch! I see. That was a very valuable statement you just made. Hmm. Flatter me all you want, but you will not get one cent out of me! Um, that's alright. All I require is this piece of testimony. And with that, the nail is in your coffin. And to think, it was something so laughably simple. <laughs> Objection! <laughs> Mr. LeBlanc, you said this just now in your testimony. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I came on board. Now, if your watch has been set to our destination's time zone, it would mean that your watch is displaying the time of our destination. Yes, and the collect time is worth its six cents. I would like you to take a look at this. If you believe this Sky Magazine, clocks on this flight run in accordance with the time of our departure time zone. Of course, the movie schedule was also created with that in mind. Miss Tenero, for confirmation's sake, what time zone is this flight aligned to right now? Well, we made a short stop at a transfer point. That's right. But it was in that small Asian country, the Republic of Zhongfa. But we didn't readjust our onboard clocks at that time. So right now, we are still running on Borginian time. What? The time difference between Borginia and our destination is nine hours. In that case, it's only natural that your watch would be out of sync with the schedule. What? Further, with your analog watch set to our destination's time, it would appear to be running three hours fast when compared to the flight's onboard clocks. It also changes everything about your testimony. And you can bet one million cents on that. In light of this information, it means you saw Mr. Hicks three hours prior at 3 a.m. My one million cents! This should clear up all the remaining accusations. So this basically winds the time frame for the time of death, right? Yes, because Mr. LeBlanc saw the victim enter the elevator at 3 a.m. It means that the time of death could be anywhere from 3 to 6.15 a.m. The question now is where was Mr. Hicks during that span of time and what was he doing? Um, I've got something to say. And you are? Yeah, um, oh. I'm Camille. I'm a flight attendant. And what is it you wish to say? Well, I think your story is a little different from how I remember it. What do you mean, Cammy? I saw Mr. Hicks sitting in his seat at 5 a.m., you know. What? How can you be so sure of the time? Oh, that's right! He pushed his call button while we were parked at the transfer point! 
Ah, the stop we made for refueling and cargo transfer in Zhongfa, correct? Yes, it was from 4 to 5 a.m. according to our clocks. And during that time, did any of the passengers leave or did any new ones board this flight? No. Not a single person got off or on in Zhengfa. What about the flight crew? The few who were handling the cargo transfer might have temporarily gotten on or off. But eventually everyone, including Kami and myself, came back on the plane. So basically, I can assume that no one left or got on since our initial takeoff. Interesting. I should keep that in mind. Objection! Objection! Hold it! Hold it! Eureka! Take that! Take that! Next time! That piggy bank was there in the shop. I saw it with my own eyes. Don't you need the captain's permission to check the shop? And he said that he didn't give you permission to do anything like that at all. I believe this piggy bank was forcibly removed from this display case. Um... Don't you think there's something strange about these suitcases? They totally ooze strange, like the color and the such. Let's start project.